Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we're going to have a look at the latest GFS, GM, E7WF, GFS ensembles and then we'll also have a look at the short term outlook through the UK Met Office model. Now things are looking very interesting over the next five to seven days and beyond. We've been flirting with the idea of some uh, heat wave like conditions from some very hot and dry weather. But the models are starting to sort of figure it out and it's looking like it's going to be a little bit of a mixed bag really over the next seven to ten days uh, and generally the end of August. It's looking like we are going to see some hot and dry weather, but we're also going to have that interspersed between some lively thunderstorms and some heavier rain at times as we have some small localised low pressure systems and cutoff lows starting to crop up in the models. So if we do go through the latest, the latest GFS, you can see we've got this northwesterly wind at the moment, which is dragging a lot of cloud and sort of drizzly weather. We saw a band of rain move southwards through this morning, and we've just been left with a lot of cloud and a few drizzly patches. That's going to continue over the next few days as this high pressure slips away. And then as we head towards this weekend, it's all to do with what happens with this low pressure system that is just sitting to the west of Ireland. Now, it's not making too much progress at this stage, but you can see it is starting to push into the UK. But at the same time, high pressure is building further northwards up to the north of Scotland. Now, if we wanted that really sustained hot and dry weather, which we had been looking at a few days ago and was firmly within the models, we want this low pressure system to not exist. However, it is existing and it's sort of in between the Azores high and this other high pressure building towards Scandinavia. And in this scenario is where we could be seeing some big thunderstorms forming. And you can see towards the southeast, we've got low pressure. Further east, we've got hotter air trying to push up from the southeast. And if we do zoom in all the way to the UK view, you can see we've got some very hot Air, 15 degree ice firm, if not 16 or even 18 degree ice firm, pushing up into northern France, into the far southeast, potentially getting some of this hot air. But we've also got this low pressure system in the southwest, bringing uh, energy and instability. And that's where we could see some thunderstorms developing through this weekend into Monday. If we go back up to the European outlook, you can see that low pressure just sits there. But you can see we've got all this high pressure around. Um, and it is going to mean we could be seeing still some quite significant showers in the south at times. The low pressure does look like eventually it will subside uh, and things will slowly turn a bit drier, especially in the north and the west with this big ridge of high pressure. But it's all down to this sort of pesky low pressure system that really just sits there over a few days, driving in showers and, and, and thunderstorms. And you can see all around the UK, we've got the 10 degree isotherm swirling around. We've got some hot air in Europe. And only if we could get it, get rid of this small low pressure system, um, we would be having drier and hotter weather. There is still the chance of some hot and dry days within this. The upper air temperatures are still reasonably high. They're above average. So we can still see temperatures in the mid-20s, as I said at the start of the video. But it's just looking like it could be potentially interspersed between days of thundery activity. But as we head all the way to day 10, you see high pressure does take control once again. And things are looking a lot drier throughout uh, sort of the bank holiday weekend temporarily. But then as we head into actually bank holiday Monday, we start to pull up some warmer air from the south once again. But that's ahead of another low pressure system diving southwards, bringing more showers and thunderstorms in. So you can see with the GFS, it's all to do with that little pesky low pressure system that we've been following the last few videos. And on this latest GFS, it really does bring a lot of rain um, and some annoying conditions in the south where we really do have pretty primed weather for hot and dry um, weather fans. But this low pressure system is just really disrupting that. If we do have a look at the GFS precipitation rate, you can just see how, um, we'll just run through that and see how these sort of showery bands and thunderstorms build in. So you can see as we head towards this weekend, as that low pressure system arrives, you see these darker greens or dark blues into yellows and greens showing heavy rain and thunderstorms pushing up from the south, crossing most of the country and really just spiralling around in the south. Further north in Scotland, it could be fairly decent, the weather, to be honest. At times, we could be seeing temperatures get into the low to mid-20s, potentially, especially in central areas, um, and that will be fairly pleasant, um, especially considering the sort of northwesterly wind we've, ha we've had, well, we're having at the moment and we're going to have for the next few days. But you can see the showers just spiral around in the south, and eventually push away as we bring in some dry up conditions before uh, the bank holiday weekend, before it does look like low pressure, once again move in. If we do go through the GM, see how that compares to the GFS towards day 10. See the high pressure does subside to our south, and then that low pressure system tries to push in. But interestingly, that low pressure crosses 
over Scotland. And being more powered by the jet stream there, it actually moves all the way into Scandinavia. So the weekend in the north will be maybe a bit of wet and windy um, over Scotland, potentially. That low does fade away. But as we head into the following week towards Monday, Tuesday, you see this, we've got this big area of high pressure building in. Now, there does look like there could be a little bit of an undercut of cooler air coming in off the North Sea for southeastern areas. But generally, most areas are under some reasonably warm upper air temperatures. And we've got this big area of high pressure over the top of the UK, which is going to mean for the rest of the working week next week, um, so in about a week's time, it is looking fairly pleasant, pretty dry, um, under this big ridge of high pressure. Big contrast to what the GFS was showing, where that low pressure system, which is now sitting to our east, was over the south of the UK. So you can see, see with this low pressure, little pesky low, it is pretty uncertain exactly on what track it's going to take. Um, if it sits to the south, we could get scenario with the GFS. Well, although we do have warm upper air temperatures, we're still going to see a lot of showers and thunderstorms. With the GM, temporarily, we see some showers and thunderstorms and some rain move through before high pressure settles things down. Maybe not the warmest upper air temperatures. But still, I know a lot of people will still be fairly pleased with low 20s and dry conditions. If we do go through the latest ECMWF, you can see that low is developing out in the Atlantic. And it tries to push in and it pushes through sort of central England. So a bit further north than GFS, a bit further south than GM. Um, and you can see it does sweep away into Europe and just clears. And we see high pressure return for next working week and if we do have a look at the energy of the hp upper temperatures you can see again there may be a bit of a colder undercut in the far southeast but generally upper temperatures are all right they're around 10 degrees 850 hpa so around average or above average for many areas especially further northwards and dry under this high pressure now of course there could be some localized few showers um, and maybe some cloud coming in off the north sea with a bit of a easterly wind but those sort of things we can't really forecast this far out. But it generally on the synoptic charts and the pressure charts, it looks decent on this latest ECMWF. And if we head towards day 10, you can see low pressure starting to push in. But we still have a lot of high pressure around. And although there may be some wet and windy at times in the last few days of August, high pressure does look like it is firmly in control in the ECMWF. So if you do have a look at the EGFS ensembles, you can see it well reflected the a lot of uncertainty we do have. You see over the next few days, temperatures are going to be around average. Then they're going to push up towards this weekend as we pull out that hot air from the far uh, southeast in from Europe. And you can see big rise in all ensemble members now. So it's guaranteed, really, we're going to see this rise in upper air temperatures getting maybe four or five degrees above average. But beyond that, that's where the uncertainty comes in. You see, that pesky low does move through, and a lot of the ensemble members are catching on to that now with a lot of precipitation spikes. But beyond that, there are still precipitation spikes, but they are reduced in frequency. There are still some large, of course, precipitation spikes. But you can see with the upper air temperatures, it really is all over the shop. You see some remaining very warm, getting up to around um, 10, 12 degrees at 850 HPA. Some going very hot, getting 16 or 18 degrees at 850 HPA. Others going around average or cooler, similar to what the GFS operational was going for, around average or below average. So it's really difficult to say at this moment what's really going to happen. It all really depends on that small, pesky sort of low pressure system. Um, and yeah, we're just going to have to see. A new feature on West Central that I noticed today was they have sea level pressure um, on the ensemble charts. And you can see it really well reflected here. Around 1,015 millibars would be sort of mean, um, sort of just general um, average sort of pressure. Anything above that you'd say is weak high pressure. Um, and then getting around 1,030 millibars, getting some pretty strong high pressure. And then you say around anything around 1,000 millibars to 1,010 millibars is lower pressure. And anything below 1,000 millibars is really deep low pressure. We're unlikely to get really deep low pressure this time of year, of course, um, as that's more of a sort of autumnal into winter sort of pattern. But you can see generally within the um, ensembles, there really isn't that much of a consensus beyond the next like, three or four days, what sort of pressure patterns we're going to see. As we head towards sort of Monday, you can see a lot of the ensembles do have higher pressure, but you can see a lot of them are around sort of mean pressure to below um, what we classify, uh, or, or getting towards what we classify as low pressure. Now, that system moving through is going to be a trough. It's not going to be some massive low pressure system with a lot of wind, um, very heavy rain. It's going to be just an area of instability that is going to provide showers and cloud. So we're not expecting to see a massive low pressure um, spike here. 
but you can see there is a lot of uncertainty over what, what the sort of the pressure is going to be. Um, some going for really big high pressure, others going for some lower pressure, um, only around five days away. So it is really up to the ensembles at the, at the moment. Things are really difficult to forecast and the weather models really haven't sort of caught on exactly what's going to happen. Of course, it's very difficult to resolve this small low pressure system. But hopefully in the next day or two, um, it should become a much clearer picture. And then once we resolve what happens with that low, if it does move through southern England or central England, then we can sort of see what's going to be happening beyond that as we head into the following week. Um, following working week and whether we're going to be seeing some warmer, drier days, similar to the ECMWF and in part the GEM, or we're going to see those really like uh, miserable, wet and windy days with heavy rain spiralling up from the south like we did see on the GFS operational run. Um, as you can see it here, the GFS operation run is generally below the average. Um, you see the thicker green line is generally below the average um, for sea level pressure. And right towards the end of the run, it's well below the average. So you can say it's probably a little bit of an outlier, but at this stage, there really is no real strong um, sort of uh, pattern at this stage. It really is all up in the air. What happens with this low pressure system? So we do finally go have a look at the short-term outlook, which is not looking too complex at this stage compared to what we're going to be seeing this weekend into next week for forecasting. You can see we've got a lot of um, wet and windy weather coming in from the northwest, a lot of cloud with that sort of northwesterly wind, we're seeing some lee wind gusts. Uh, I've seen reported by the Met Office where air is descending off hills and mountains, bringing uh, stronger gusts. We're seeing some heavy, uh, stronger gusts in places, and we're seeing some drizzly, patchy rain in a few areas as well. As you can see by this UK Met Office uh, run, you can see a lot of just light little blue specks here or there, just symbolising some thicker cloud and drizzle pretty much anywhere really um, and you can see as we head into the next week uh, or into the end of this working week so a lot of showers still around but you can see as, as we head towards this this weekend you can see that low pressure system that we were um, th looking on the GFS very similar um, sort of track on this latest UK Met Office run with heavy showers and thunderstorms pushing up from the south um, so we really have to keep an eye on what happens with that hopefully um, this UK Met Office run um, isn't following the GFS if we do have a look at the mean sea level pressure you can see that low pressure system just to the south um, sitting over southern England hopefully that will clear through and allow high pressure to topple back in um, but really we just got to keep an eye on what happens over the next day or two. It really is all up in the air. So make sure you do stay tuned for videos over the next few days. As hopefully we'll finally be able to say for definite um, whether we're going to be seeing or how much hot weather we're going to be seeing and how much rain and cloudiness we're going to be seeing. So if we finally do refresh um, the latest precipitation charts. Um, if we do go to full screen, just let it load briefly. You can see at the moment we do have a lot of sort of patchy rain around, a lot of it in England. You see a lot of these small little green areas, which is thicker cloud and some patchy drizzle. The heavier rain that we did see this morning has moved into uh, Europe now, Belgium, Germany, down to Luxembourg. It's a bit heavier now as well. And you can generally see a lot of just drizzly rain and cloud coming in off the north, uh, out of the North Atlantic. Um, and it is expected to sort of pep up over the next few days before that low pressure system that we've been looking at has finally arrives towards the end of this working week into the weekend. It does very slowly move in. Um, and we'll just really have to keep an eye on its track, really, for what sort of weather we're going to be seeing next week. So anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.